In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. If your enemy is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. If your opponent is temperamental, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. If sovereign and subject are in accord, put division between them. Attack him where he is unprepared, appear where you are not expected. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. Engage people with what they expect. It is what they are able to discern and confirms their projections. It settles them into predictable patterns of response, occupying their minds while you wait for the extraordinary moment, that which they cannot anticipate. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. Thus, we may know that there are five essentials for victory. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. He will win who prepared himself, waits to take the enemy unprepared. He will win who has military capacity and is not interfered with by the sovereign. Treat your men as your own beloved sons, and they will follow you into the deepest valley. Even the finest sword plunged into salt water will eventually rust. Move swift as the wind and closely formed as the wood. Attack like the fire and be still as the mountain. When you surround an army, leave an outlet free. Do not press a desperate foe too hard. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. There are not more than five musical notes, yet the combination of these five give rise to more melodies than can ever be heard. There are not more than five primary colors, yet in combination they produce more hues than can ever be seen. There are not more than five cardinal tastes, yet combinations of them yield more flavors than can ever be tasted. Who wishes to fight must first count the cost. When the enemy is relaxed, make them toil. When full, 
starve them, when settled, make them move. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry, which can on no account be neglected. If you wait by the river long enough, the bodies of your enemies will float by. Know yourself and you will win all battles. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. So in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike what is weak. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby, you can be the director of the opponent's fate. Build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across. When strong, avoid them. If of high moral, depress them. Seem humble to fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. If united, separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels at winning with ease. Rouse him and learn the principle of his activity or inactivity. Force him to reveal himself so as to find out his vulnerable spots. One may know how to conquer without being able to do it. One mark of a great soldier is that he fight on his own terms or fights not at all. You have to believe in yourself. If the mind is willing, the flesh could go on and on without many things. Attack is the secret of defense. Defense is the planning of an attack. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. Convince your enemy that he will gain very little by attacking you. This will diminish his enthusiasm. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Wheels of justice grind slow, but grind fine. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. Move not unless you see an advantage. Use not your troops unless there is something to be gained. Fight not unless the position is critical. Plan for what is difficult while it is easy, and do what is great while it is small. Water shapes its course according to the nature of the ground over which it flows. The soldier works out his victory in relation to the foe whom he is facing. Who does not know the evils of war cannot appreciate its benefits. Conform to the enemy's tactics until a favorable opportunity offers. Then come forth and engage in a battle that shall prove decisive. Therefore, just as water retains no constant shape, so in warfare there are no constant conditions. In battle, there are not more than two methods of attack, the direct and the indirect, yet these two in combination give rise to an endless series of maneuvers. If those who are sent to draw water begin by drinking themselves, 
the army is suffering from thirst. One may know the condition of a whole army from the behavior of a single man. It is the unemotional, reserved, calm, detached warrior who wins, not the hothead seeking vengeance, and not the ambitious seeking fortune.